This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. As we've said before, automakers see a chance to make big money with mobility services. And now Chinese ride-hailing company Didi introduced what it says is the world's first purpose-built electric vehicle for ride-hailing. Called the D1, it was co-developed with Chinese automaker BYD and is equipped with a Level 2 assisted driving system. Other safety features include a driver monitoring system, a steering wheel with safety alerts, and an AI voice and video monitoring system that uses DD's facial and object detection technology. It has a range of 418 kilometers or 260 miles based on the older NEDC test. It features sliding rear doors for easy access and more seating space than a conventional vehicle. DD will launch the service in a pilot program in the city of Changsha next month before rolling it out to other cities in the country. It wants 1 million D1s in operation by 2025. Tesla has issued two safety recalls. The first involves more than 9,100 Model X crossovers from 2016. NHTSA says the roof trim may have been adhered without first using a primer, which may result in the trim being separated from the vehicle while it's being driven. Tesla will inspect the vehicle and perform a retention test. And if the vehicle fails the test, the company will apply a primer to fix it. The other recall involves 400 Model Y vehicles built this year. NHTSA says the bolts connecting the front upper control arm and the steering knuckle may not have been tightened properly, which could result in them detaching from each other. And in other Tesla news, its 4680 battery cells are not only going to help out its passenger vehicles, but also its semi. Elon Musk says the Class 8 truck will easily get 800 kilometers or nearly 500 miles of range, and they see a path to 1,000 kilometers or 620 miles. Musk says the semi will use its new structural battery design as well. And speaking of EV range, the US EPA says the Volkswagen ID.4 can go 250 miles on a single charge. It does that with a battery with 77 kilowatt hours of usable power. That seems a little low, and it is. The Tesla Model Y is rated at 326 miles with a 75 kilowatt hour battery and all wheel drive. And the Ford Mustang Mach-E was just rated at 300 miles of range with a nearly 100 kilowatt hour pack. Volume sales of the ID.4, which starts at just under 40 grand before incentives, kick off early next year. And while we're on the subject of efficiency, The Ford Bronco Sport with the entry-level 1.5-liter three-cylinder engine is rated at 25 mpg combined, with the larger, more powerful 2.0-liter power plant that dips slightly to 23 mpg combined. What's the weather tomorrow? High of 64. Find me the closest coffee shop. 20. Results found. And a date for tonight. Oh, good. Introducing dynamic voice recognition in the all-new Hyundai Elantra. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Yesterday, we told you how 80% of the emissions from a car come during the first two to three minutes after you start the engine. That's how long it takes for the catalytic converter to heat up and start working properly. And that prompted a number of you to post comments saying that the cat should be preheated. And you're right, that is the solution. But keep in mind, you're not the first to think of this. Many companies have tried, and so far nothing has caught on. None of them have come up with a small, affordable system that will instantly generate 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit and last for 15 years. So if you think you have the solution, it's time to build a prototype. Because if it works, you'll have the global auto industry beating a path to your door. And then you can retire and buy your own island. 
Should automakers buy EV components or make them in-house? Should they license their technology to other OEMs? And if they do, does this mean some automakers become suppliers? Well, on AutoLine After Hours, we asked Don Walker, the soon-to-be retired CEO of Magna, and here's what he had to say. I don't see the, uh, the OEMs being effective suppliers. They may have good technologies, and we, we've done partnerships with them as well, but they really need to focus on uh, making the product they want in a competitive way and having the right, uh, attracting the right people. You know, I, I, I think everybody has, the, they have to do what they believe is the right thing because they have a lot of good employees and they want to look after the employees. But if they have, if they're too ver vertical integrated or they, they have defined benefit pension plans, they have all these benefits, they're not going to be able to succeed. They're just, you know, they're just not going to be able to, in my opinion, unless you have, uh, you have products that have these huge margins. So I think the trend towards globalization will continue, but it won't be like the, you know, the, the be all and end all. I think the trend towards continuing to go outside for uh, suppliers to have the best product at the best price will continue. Uh, they will insource some things, especially if they're trying to utilize the employees they have there, because I think they do care about their employees but they may be running the attrition curve down. I can't comment on it. They're all going to have their own, their own strategy. But if they don't go to where they get the best product at the lowest price with the best quality, they will not sustain their profit margins and they won't sustain themselves long term. And I, you know, it's a difficult, uh, it's a difficult question for everybody to wrestle with. But as a supplier, I think we're going to continue to have more opportunity. Uh, will be the big suppliers will be will get bigger. Uh, we'll have to have strong balance sheets. We'll have to be doing deep R and D, be software companies as well as hardware. So you know, I think uh, there there will, there will be a lot of changes coming up, but they don't happen overnight. You know, lots of people buy new tires this time of year, and one thing you're likely to hear is buy the best possible tire because it's the only thing between your vehicle and the road. So how do you do that? Well, here's a few tips and tricks I think might help out. First, make sure you know the right tire size. What's on the vehicle is not always what it left the factory with. You'll find the right info on the B-pillar by the driver's door. Next, it's good to know the exact trim level of your vehicle and engine size. You'll need that to start your search. Also have an idea of your budget. But after searching for a while, many people will narrow their list only to get stuck between a few choices. If you find yourself here, it's time to check the specs on the tires. Specifically, look at the tread depth and weight. Obviously, you probably want the most tread possible, and you'd be surprised how much it can vary between brands. Weight information can be used several ways. A heavier tire might actually be better when it's for a truck. It could indicate a more robust construction. Or if you've got a sports car, you might want the tire that weighs less. Even the tire manufacturer sites have this information. But it can be also useful to check out a site like Tire Rack because you can find customer reviews. And it's possible to find someone with the same exact vehicle as you that has left a comment. That information can be very useful. And I hope you have found my tips useful too. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game, and by Hyundai. The latest cars to come through the Auto Line garage include the updated 2021 Lexus LS and the Mazda CX-9. From the outside, the easiest way you can spot the new LS is with its triple projector headlamps. Inside, you might notice a bigger, optional 12.3-inch touchscreen. There are also some new switches located on the console, so you don't have to select everything through the screen, such as turning on the heated seats. You'll also find a nice digital rearview mirror. Lexus tuned the LS for a softer ride with lighter control arms, different spring and damping rates, and different sway bars. It also revised the hybrid for better acceleration. The 2021 Mazda CX-9 also gets a number of updates, starting with a standard 10 and a quarter inch center screen. Owners are also offered a three-year trial to monitor and control their car via a phone app, 
and a three-month or two-gigabyte trial of in-car Wi-Fi connectivity. There are several seat upgrades with new patterns as well. That's not a lot of change for the 2021 model year, but the CX-9 is the flagship of Mazda's lineup, so it was already very well equipped. And sales are up solidly this year. Ford of Europe says it's unlocking more potential for its fleet customers with the launch of Marketplace services on the Ford Pass Pro app. Marketplace will give fleet owners of up to five vehicles with connected technology access to other third-party companies that have already signed up. There, they'll be able to take advantage of exclusive offers on fuel, road tolls, or even credit card payments from customers. Ford estimates small businesses could save more than 500 euro per vehicle per year. While use of the app is free, users will still have to pay for connected services and a Wi-Fi hotspot when needed. Programming note here. The Autoline crew will be taking a break for the next two days to celebrate the Thanksgiving holiday. For our American audience, we hope you get the chance to celebrate Thanksgiving with your family, even if it's through a Zoom call. And for those of you outside of the United States, we hope you and your families can find things to be thankful for, even though we're living in the middle of a pandemic. And before we go, we need your help. We're starting to put together a list of all the publicly traded automotive companies in the world. OEMs, suppliers, retailers, and startups. But we want to make sure we don't miss any. So if you've got any suggestions, give us the name of the company, its trading symbol, and what stock exchange it's on. You can leave them in the comments section or email them to viewermail at autoline.tv. And that officially wraps up the show. We'll see you again on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.